Good afternoon, everyone. It's uh, a lovely DC day, and it's equally warm in here as well, I think. But I'm really glad to see all of you. Uh, this is the second year that DOE has been hosting this wonderful event, and it's amazing how large it's become. Uh, and I'm honored to speak to you about my office, the Office of Technology Transitions. So we are a small but mighty office that uh, has some money that we want to get out to the public, specifically to the hydrogen sector. And we are uh, accepting applications, which is what I want to speak to you about. First, who are we? So OTT is a relatively new office. It was uh, created uh, in officially in 2015 by the Secretary of Energy. And our mission is to commercialize DOE's investments in technology. Uh, you could imagine that a lot of our investments go to our national laboratories, our 17 national laboratories. But we do fund private industry and uh, universities. And you know as well as I do that technologies that go through R&D uh, can sometimes get stuck. They can get stuck uh, because they don't have funds to go on to the next stage. And so OTT's uh, mission is to assist in un getting those technologies unstuck. So we are the commercialization subject matter experts at the department. We cover R&D, piloting, demonstration, even deployment. We cover all of those phases. And how do we do this? We do this through a, a variety of programs that encourage commercialization at all different phases. So this is one of my favorite slides. Uh, for many of you, you will know that a technology goes through phases, R&D, demonstration, and deployment. And the department has programs that specialize in each one of these phases. Historically, DOE has been known for its R&D. We've been doing it for over 40 years. Our Office of Science, the SBIR program, have been doing this for a very long time. And then development, the next phase, when we start developing pilots for some of those lab scale technologies. Our program offices, you're very familiar with EERE, our solar technologies office, our nuclear office, fossil energy and carbon management. These are what we call our applied offices. ARPA-E is, uh, is a clean tech focused program created under the Obama administration. Uh, and it also re focuses on R&D as well. Now, next phase, demonstration. This is, a, this is a difficult phase, especially for the clean energy sector. And why is that? Because energy, clean energy technology, has a big challenge of jumping from R&D to deployment. That's, that's a very, very big jump. And there's a lot of scale up risk. So ideally, you want to demonstrate those technologies so that when it is ready for deployment, that risk has been lowered. Unfortunately, demonstration requires a lot of capital with almost no return. So who is going to invest in demonstration? Hardly anybody. The department has created a new, a new office called the Office of Clean Energy Demonstration, OSED, that is trying to fill this gap. And they've been awarded billions and billions of dollars through the, uh, through the uh, Bipartisan Infrastructure Law Bill. I don't want to throw an acronyms at you guys. Bill. And so we're trying to fill that gap. So let's say it's, it's, it's demonstrated successfully. Now you go into financing. The department also does that as well through our loan programs office. The loan programs office is, is the financing arm of the department, and they fund first-of-a-kind commercially ready technologies. It's 
So how do we fit in? How does OTT fit in in all of this? So there is a fund that was created called the Technology Commercialization Fund. And the different program offices of the department contribute to this fund, 0.9% to be exact, of their RD and D budgets. So historically, this fund, what we call the base fund, the base TCF, was focused on our national labs. And it was usually running between 30 to $40 million a year. So we would create programs for our national labs in helps to help them in their commercialization activities. But what's very exciting is the bill, the, Bureau, the infrastructure law, awarded billions of dollars to our program offices. 0.9% of billions and billions of dollars is actually quite a bit of money. And we created a separate branch of the TCF called the Bill TCF. And that's coming out to about $50 million a year for five years, so over $250 million, which is, for us, is quite a bit of money. So what are we doing with this money? <laughs> We've created programs. And the first one I want to talk to you about is the Make It Prize. So the Make It Prize is about a $30 million um, program. And what we hope to do is encourage manufacturers of long duration energy storage, hydrogen components, fossil energy and carbon management components with an award of up to $5 million for their construction of a manufacturing facility. We also would like to award money to those communities that would like to bring manufacturing, clean tech manufacturing, to their communities, and we also have a separate program for that. So the first one, under make it, facilities, the facilities track. So again, that is for developers that want to construct manufacturing facilities. The way it'll work is uh, obviously we, the, the project would be here in the United States or its territories. And we would work in phases, so you would apply uh, for an initial small amount. Uh, and if you choose, if you get that small amount, you can reapply again for the bigger amount. So like I said, we're willing uh, to fund up to $5 million uh, for, per applicant. And because this is a prize, and I, I really want to emphasize this, prizes are a mechanism that we use as the department that has a lower barrier of entry than our historically other funding opportunity announcements. Prizes were created under a, a separate bill, a separate law, which does not require as much um, paperwork. In addition, a prize is a lump sum of money that is awarded to the recipient with really no strings attached. So that means once you receive the money, you can do whatever you want with it, as opposed to our other funding opportunities, which require a lot of more oversight. So that is the beauty of prizes. Uh, if you'll notice, uh, the deadline is October 18th. So we've got a couple more weeks. So if you're at all interested, I'm here. I can talk about it. But I also would say submit an application. The very first application is not a, a high, have a lot of high requirements. Secondly, the strategies track. So this is for communities, as I mentioned, that want to bring clean tech to their uh, regions. And what we're doing here is we are going to award up to 250,000 for those plans that we think have the best chance of success. And again, that, mo that money could be awarded to, it could be used for whatever they choose. This is not so much intended for project developers. These are more for economic uh, development agencies, regional economic development agencies, or, or municipalities or local governments. Again, open to everybody. OK, our second program, the voucher program, our newest program. Very exciting. This is a new mechanism that we are using now where a third party that we fund will be matching service providers 
with service recipients. So when you're developing a technology, many of you know there is quite a bit of analysis and validation that's required. And when you are a small startup, many of you know that there aren't a lot of funds for those, that, those kinds of development activities. So the department has now created this program to ease that burden. And so the various de uh, technology development activities, as I said, market analyses, piloting, technology validation, those are the kinds of problems that we want to help with. So if you were to apply to this program, we would, our third party would match you with a service provider. There are five topics under this program. You can see there pre-demonstration commercialization support, clean energy demonstration support, uh, ranging from fifty to $250,000 per voucher. Uh, and so as I, that's the website there. I urge you to take a look. Uh, some of those opportunities are only for projects that have received prior DOE funding, but some of them are open to all. And I won't go into the details. Uh, I, I kind of went through this already, but there's, the, the opportunity is now advertised. Uh, the third party, which is called it Energy Works, by the way, they, they were mentioned on the previous slide, will do the matchmaking. Uh, and then the project will be awarded. OK. Another one of our tools, the lab partnering service. If you are looking for technology for your particular project, the national labs have a plethora of resources. But you can imagine it could be quite difficult and challenging to find a technology within the 17 national labs. So we've created this service is basically the Google of lab technology that will tell you what technology is available for licensing, who the researchers are if you'd like to contact them, and which labs are offering. So please keep this in mind, labpartnering.org. Of course, there's a ton of hydrogen technology that's advertised there. Another program, EPIC. We fund accelerators and incubators all over the country. We have a, a, a program that uh, awards those types of uh, funds to entities that want to create accelerators and incubators. Uh, we are in our third year now. We've, uh, these are a little bit old, but we've, we've uh, awarded over 10, five to $10 million. All of these incubators and accelerators are accepting applications at no cost. So if there is, if your company is interested in in commercializing further, this would be the, the program to look at. OK, so I will stop there. Happy to answer any questions. I don't want to run into the next uh, presenter, but please, if there's any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Hi. Um, I'm Carolina Alstrand with Hycomite. We do methane splitting. And we would definitely make use of these programs. Um, my question would be, so for um, this uh, funding from whether you need to have a track record, for example, you mentioned there's some that require the DOE having you know, having had a previous mm -hmm. relationship with them. Is there a procedure that we need to follow in the sense, like do we schedule an appointment like we would do with the LPO, usually, for example, to yeah, move further? Yeah, it's, it's a great question. <laughs> <laughs> so it, because these are competitive and the application process is open now, uh, you can't meet with us other than right here, right now, because it's a public forum. <laughs> But we wouldn't be able to talk to you individually because it could be construed as favoritism. If you have a question, the opportunity does have an email. But if you wanted to speak to us and get a meeting, it would be really difficult. That goes for most of our awards, except for the LPO. They're a little different. But uh, if there is any interest, you, I'm sure you'll be getting the, the slides. But if you want to talk to me, I'm here. I'll be here for most of the day. We can talk further. Okay, 
Thank you very much.